Alright guys, in this list I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do like a chainsaw tank thread type of rig. So let's just go ahead and go to create polygon parameters, make a pipe. Let's rotate him 90 degrees so he's facing us. Go to the inputs and change the thickness a bit. Scale this guy up a bit as well. And once you have this, let's add 50 so to the subdivisions axis. And let's actually scale him inwards as well, just like so. That'll work perfectly. And then just go to edit, delete by type history, modify freeze transformations. And I'm just going to call this guy chainsaw. Chainsaw underscore threads. Now, what we have to do is go to right click, click face. Now, the only reason I'm showing you guys this because it is going to get a little bit repetitive selecting all these faces, one yes, one no, one yes, is just so you guys know that you can do it too with ease and how exactly. Now, this is a very simple tank thread and chainsaw rig. I wouldn't recommend it in a higher end studio, but if it's a personal project, or like a very very small studio and you need to get this rig done because the proper way in order to do these type of rigs is with expressions and a bunch of scripting which not a lot of people know especially when they start rigging so this is like the most basic it can get but it works very efficiently so the next step once you select all the faces one yes one no one yes you're gonna hold down shift and then press right click on your mouse and go to extrude face and now look for this arrow and you're just going to move it outwards a bit. Scale it down on both sides just so it kind of looks like a tank thread or a chainsaw. And once you got it done, press Q. Go to object mode and again delete your history since it did made a new one. And now it's back to zero. The next step is go to create nerves primitive circle. And basically what you're going to do for this guy is match kind of like the exact shape as a tank thread just like so let's name this well let's actually delete history and freeze transformations like always and let's call this threads circle for example let's just go with that to not overthink it now what we're going to do is our famous wire deformer ah. <laughs> so let's click geometry press enter click the circle Press enter. Now let's go to our wire inputs down here. Again, drop off this since it's very important. Just type in a bunch of zeros. Now when we go ahead and manipulate a CV, it's going to manipulate the geometry, of course. So the main thing you should know about this is that let's say you do have like a deform tank thread already. You can't really like adjust the controller shape to it and do what I'm about to do because it just doesn't work that way. So my recommendation is like, if you do have like a circular mesh that has like all the tank threads as it is, then you can go ahead and make the circular controller around it just like so. And then is when you go ahead and place this actual with the CVs to adjust to the tank thread or the chainsaw. So it's not you have the mesh and then you go ahead and try rig this. It's pretty much you have the round tank thread. Then you go ahead and manipulate it in order to fix into the geometry you're trying to put it into. So based on the shape that you have for the actual chainsaw or anything that you're going to use it for, you have to adapt this shape to it. So that's very important. Now let's say this is a shape of the tank thread or anything like that. When you go ahead and click the geometry and rotate it on Z, you're going to notice it's going to follow along no matter if it goes straight or backwards, which is very, very neat for a very simple rig that you need. And as well, it's not deforming awkwardly or anything. It's just keeping its balance and it's rotating along the curve. Now, if you do go ahead and rotate in a different axis, it is going to break easily. So how to go about to fix this? So the first thing that you need to do is let's create nervous primitives, another circle. And we're just going to scale this guy like this and scale him here. 
edit, delete by type history, modify freeze transformations, and this is just going to be our main underscore controller, for example. Now, you're going to select the chainsaw threads, geometry, the circle, and the circle base wire. Then also click the main control and press P, which basically means this main controller drives everything accordingly, and you can still go ahead and rotate your geometry. But let's go a little bit step ahead. We don't want animator select into geometry at all. So let's click the main control, go to edit, add attribute, and let's just type in gear, for example. Minimum, maximum, we leave it at default in order for it to go infinite. And the default is actually zero. So the default of the minimum, maximum, we keep it blank. And the actual default that says here, we're going to put it on zero because that's what it has to be. Click OK. Now what we're going to do is go to Windows, General Editors, Connection Editor, Reload Left. We're going to see gear right here. We're going to click the geometry, Reload Right, and look for Rotate Z, which is going to be right here. Now once that's connected and we close out of it, let's go to our controller again. And whenever we tweak the actual gear attribute holding command or control left mouse click, you're going to see that just by the controller is all an animator needs to in order to get an animation out of this. They can go ahead and rotate it. They could even go ahead and scale it, which is very important because let's say for certain scenes it needs to be bigger or smaller. Now if you don't do it like this, which the geometry and the circle underneath the main control, it's not going to be able to scale properly. That's very important to keep well note of. Now, just so you guys can see, let's just type in a thousand for like the frames on the bottom right here. Once you have that, just to show you guys, let's type in a key right here for the gear. And once that's done, let's go to frame a thousand, for example, and type in 2000 for the gear to rotate. Now when you go ahead and press play, you're going to notice that it's animating just like so across the gear, across the actual circle. And there you have it. That's how you do a very, very simple rig for a gear. That could be very overcomplicated when you start using expressions and scripting. But if you go about like having like I started a actual right here polygon primitives pipe and then when you make the controller you adjust to the shape you want then you can easily make this because if this is a shape a modeler gives me and I make a controller like a circle right around this the curvature and everything and do the wire deformer it's not going to work at all when you go ahead and rotate the geometry so it just has to be in default all around then you go ahead and adjust the shape you want and that way you can go ahead and have a very full function rig and you can rotate it anywhere so basically if like the tank is moving or like the actual chainsaw is being rotated you rotate it by the main control and as well if you want to scale it you can do that as well so notice the gear is always going straight no matter the controller rotating and it's very amazing that you can do this with just a wire deformer in less than a few minutes because this is one of the most complicated rigs that you could have to do when it comes to expressions and everything. So if you're working at a small project or a small studio and they need something like this, I would highly recommend going in this route instead because it's just much quicker. Expressions just take much longer to do. And that is how you do a very simple chainsaw or tank thread rig. See you guys in the next lesson.